In 2023, I made a video showing how to play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on PC using the Ship of Harkonnen PC port. It's since reached almost 250,000 views, but it's definitely out of date now, so today, I'm back with a brand new guide which is more concise, accurate, and completely up to date for 2025 and beyond. This version should stay relevant going into 2026, and I'll keep the pinned comment updated with any important changes or new features as they come out. Ship of Harkinian is an unofficial PC port for Ocarina of Time developed by Harbour Masters that enhances and modernizes the original Nintendo 64 release, adding things like widescreen, 60fps, 4k visuals, and full mod and texture support. In this guide, I will also show you how to add an optional 4k texture pack to the game, as well as going over some of the enhancements that the mod adds. Since this is not an emulator, all you need is the port itself, and a copy of the Ocarina of Time debug ROM. This is still the best way to experience Ocarina of Time today, so for anyone looking to play for the first time, or if you're returning, this is exactly the right place to be. Let's dive in and discuss how to set all this up. Alright, so here we are. The first thing as always that you're going to need to do is get yourself a copy of Ocarina of Time, the ROM. Uh, you can use the N64 version or you can use the uh, GameCube version. I'm not going to go into how to get that today, but um, I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Um, it doesn't have to be the debug ROM, by the way. I know I said that previously, but uh, it used to be, but it doesn't have to be anymore. So once you've got yourself your ROM, just drag it onto your desktop like so. Uh, I highly recommend you create a separate folder uh, somewhere for your ROMs. So I have a ROMs folder here and I'm just going to drag uh, the Ocarina of Time ROM, which is in here into this folder um, and this is how we're going to tell the port where our game installation actually is so uh, that's that all right so here we are ready to download the pc port itself um, in terms of how we're going to be downloading it it will be through the github so that's the link i'll provide but i'll also include the link to their website where you can read a little bit about the port um, but the link will be to the releases tab on their github so the most recent version for you will likely be different but whichever one it is uh, go ahead and click download so for me i'm going to hit windows here all right so once that's extracted we can go ahead and actually install the port so once again i recommend throwing this folder somewhere in an emulation folder you can always create a shortcut to it later and um, so for me i'm just going to drag it into my emulation folder here now that you've got the folder where you want it to be let's go ahead and open it up and the first thing we're going to do is actually run the soh.exe so this is going to go ahead and present us with a little box here saying no OTR files found, generate one now. Let's click yes and no ROMs found, look for one, yes again. And this is where we're going to actually select the ROM. So for me, I have it in emulation ROMs Ocarina of Time. So just select the Z64 file or whatever uh, file it is that you're using and click open. And after a brief moment, that's going to initialize the uh, ROM and actually install the PC port onto your PC. All right, so now that's finished up, it's gonna present you with this little box here, ROM extracted, extract another, just hit no. And after a brief moment, it's actually gonna boot up the, um, the PC port straight away. So that's it actually installed, and you can see it adding some files in here, uh, but we're gonna actually come and close out of this just now. And now that we've actually got the port on our system, let's go ahead and install the HD texture pack. All right, so here we are on the Ocarina of Time Reloaded website. If you do want to install the HD texture pack, then this is where you need to be. Uh, by default, it will be selected on Glide N64 right here. So just make sure you click Ship of Harkinian here. And honestly, I recommend just going with the HD OTR. The 4K one seems to have some problems. I couldn't really get it to load properly. Um, but overall, the HD one is more than enough. It looks incredible as is. Um, so when you're ready, just go ahead and download that and it will download as a RAR file. Okay, so once we have the texture pack downloaded, just go ahead and extract it like you would with anything else, clicking extract. And this is a big file again, even if it's just the HD one, so it will take a minute or two to extract everything. Okay, so now the texture pack is extracted, you want to go ahead and reopen your uh, Ship of Harkinian folder where we have all these new files appearing. And we're going to go ahead and open up the mods folder here and you'll see a text file saying custom mod files go here so if we open up the texture pack we'll see there's only two files here and one of them is an o2r file 
So all we need to do to install the texture pack is drag this large file into the mods folder, uh, which will take a couple of seconds. And once that's done, the HD texture pack is now installed into the port itself. So that's actually everything we need to do in terms of downloading things and installing things. So we can go ahead and close this folder here. So now the only thing really left to do is if we right click the SOH.exe and drag it onto the desktop like so, we can create a shortcut and this will just make it so that you can launch the mod uh, or the, the port, sorry, from anywhere on your computer uh, such as your desktop. So when you're ready, go ahead and double click this and we'll get into the actual configuration part. All right, so once the port has actually loaded up, we can go ahead and full screen it like so. And you should notice that the texture pack is already loaded. Um, if it's not for whatever reason, uh, all you need to do is click escape here, head down to mod menu and uh, just click enable mods. So if it's off for you, it might look like this. This is the default, uh, just default N64 version. But by pressing enable mods, that should toggle the pack on. Uh, also, you can do this with tab. So by clicking tab, you can see that I can toggle through enabling and disabling the pack. I can you already see what a difference the HD textures actually make to the game. Um, but without further ado, let's go over some of the enhancements and tweaks that the port actually offers us. I won't go over all of them, but I'll definitely go over the ones I think you should enable in order to make your experience a little bit better. So first of all, by hitting escape, we can open up the menu like so. There's a lot of very overwhelming uh, buttons and uh, menus here, but trust me, I'll go through everything. Make sure you understand. Uh, so first of all, let's head down to the graphics tab here. Uh, and under here, we can find things like FPS, widescreen, um, stuff like that. So by default, the frame rate will be at the original 20. I recommend cranking this up to 60. Um, if you have a higher refresh rate monitor, feel free to go as high as you want, but you might notice some jitters and stutters the higher you go. So for me, I put it to around about 120. I find that's a good middle ground. Um, and uh, we can also see if we go over to advanced settings here, we can toggle the um, aspect ratio. So by default, it might be at 4x3. I don't think it is usually though, but in case it is, just change this to widescreen 16x9 under the drop down menu here. Uh, additionally, under the pixel count presets, uh, we can go ahead and set this to any resolution we wish. So for me, I'm using a 1440p monitor, so I'll go ahead and select 6x 1440p. And already we can see in the background the difference that using a higher frame rate makes. The game just feels so much more fluid um, uh, and uh, smooth to look at. Um, but other than that, nothing really else here needs to be changed. You can mess around with anti-aliasing if you want. Don't put this up too high, it can look a little bit funny. But uh, other than that, everything else here is fine. So let's go ahead and navigate to the controls menu. And if you have a controller connected, like I do, I have my PS5 controller uh, enabled right now, it should map everything automatically. And for the most part, all of these settings are fine. Uh, however, there's a few things we need to change. So under the C buttons here, we are going to be using a free camera, which is going to conflict with these controls. Um, honestly, I don't really think you need most of these because uh, we will be also using the D-pad for item, um, for items to assign items. So for up, uh, I would recommend just getting rid of this. I don't think you need it. Um, for down, I usually set this to my right stick click, so RS. And for left and right, I set these to X and Y respectively, or square and triangle, um, if you're using a PlayStation 5 controller. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, these will cause issues with the free camera if they're assigned to your analog stick. Uh, other than that, nothing else here needs to be changed. You can see that everything is automatically assigned. Like if I'm uh, moving my analog stick here, it is already uh, assigned. Everything is already mapped. There's just a couple of changes that we need to make. So the next one uh, is under Ocarina controls. I recommend Clicking D-pad or kind of playback, you can also individually reassign the buttons used to play the notes. Um, but this just makes it easier, uh, especially since we've just remapped our C buttons, which are the usual ones that you use to control the arena, uh, the ocarina. Sorry. So uh, I recommend enabling D-pad ocarina playback. Next thing we need to change is under camera controls here. So let's drop that menu down. Now by default, everything's going to be inverted because that's the way the game comes. So I recommend turning all this off because it's just terrible. Uh, unless you like inverted controls. Um, and we'll also see under third person camera, we have a free look option. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. That will of course allow us to move the camera freely, um, like in any other modern third person game. 
Uh, usually this stuff is fine. You can mess around with the sensitivity if you like, but I think leaving it at default is, is more than more than acceptable. And that's pretty much everything we need to configure under the controls menu. If we navigate to the enhancements tab, we can start configuring some of the quality of life and uh, graphical fixes that the uh, port offers. So under quality of life, I recommend enabling autosave and remember save location, as well as instant put away. So what these do is obviously autosave saves the game every three minutes and remember save location means that when you save the game and leave, you come back exactly where you saved uh, previously. It doesn't just respawn you at uh, the middle in the middle of Hyrule Field or, or whatever the default game usually does. Also instant put away, there's usually a short delay between uh, having to uh, put items away. This basically just removes that delay. Uh, but other than that, everything here is pretty much fine. Obviously, you can configure some of these if you want, but I would recommend just leaving them as they are. Next, under the Graphics tab, I recommend disabling LOD. This makes it so that um, there's not a, a decreasing quality of assets the further they are away from you, which obviously, since we're running this on modern PCs, we're more than capable of running. Um, and also over here, under Draw Distance, I recommend cranking this up to 5, Obviously, this just increases the distance at which objects can be rendered. Um, and also, if you're using widescreen, uh, make sure to click this. Otherwise, certain objects might not render outside of the 4x3 uh, sort of zone, even if you are using widescreen. But other than that, I think everything else here is fine as well. So uh, next, we can head over to the items tab here. And there's a couple things I recommend enabling here. So we have equip items on D-pad and assignable tunic and boots. So obviously this just lets you equip normal items on your D-pad, which is incredibly useful, um, such as the ocarina. Uh, and assignable tunics and boots uh, lets us basically assign, well, tunics and uh, the uh, the metal boots, for example, to the D-pad so that we don't have to keep going into the menu every time we want to change them. You'll know if you've played the original how annoying this is. Uh, it does get fixed in the remake, but we do ha also have the option to fix it in the original now, which is uh, which is great. But uh, other than that, everything else here is, is fine as well. Next, under the fixes tab, there's nothing really here I, I recommend changing unless there's specific little quirks that annoy you that you've noticed. But fix camera drift, uh, I do recommend enabling. That, that can get quite irritating. Uh, basically, when you're standing still, sometimes the camera will just drift off to the left, which is a bug. It's not supposed to happen. So uh, you can enable that if you like. Um, but other than that, we've pretty much uh, ironed out most of the sort of quirks and quality of life issues that the game had. All of these options under difficulty, mini games, extra modes, etc., are all things that I'll let you explore yourself. Uh, for the most part, I think what we've changed is enough to just make the the game a little bit more enjoyable. Um, there are also presets under settings, um, so you can enable some sort of vanilla plus. Um, and uh, randomizer options as well, which is all under the randomizer tab if you want to have a play around with that. But other than that, I think everything we've changed is pretty, uh, pretty good and just makes the experience a little bit more enjoyable. So I'll let you play around with some of the settings if you want, but once you're ready, all you need to do is just hit escape. And if you press F11, that should full screen the game completely. And now you're kind of ready to play the game. So you can go ahead and click start and uh, get started and enjoy the HD textures and everything that comes along with it. And with that, you can now enjoy playing Ocarina of Time with all the incredible enhancements that this PC port offers, like widescreen, a 360 degree camera, and higher resolutions and frame rates. There are still lots of other small tweaks and edits you can make to the game, so I hope you'll enjoy exploring the port's configuration for yourself as well, but what I've showed today is more than enough to make the game feel amazing to play on PC. Big shout out to Harbour Masters for making this PC port possible, and with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this updated guide. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing, and especially if you want to see more videos covering game restoration in the future. Thank you for watching.